Hello, I'm Sophia Hang Yu, Product Specialist at Mirai Asset, and joining me today is Edward Chan, Investment Analyst, to give us his review of the Asian semiconductor industry this year. Welcome, Edward. It's great to chat with you today. Thank you, Sophia. So, Edward, let's talk about the topic which has plagued the industry for the year, the global chip shortage. Just how did this shortage come about and why has it persisted for so long? Um, so, on the demand side, we see some unexpected demand uh, coming from the COVID and work from home trend. So the demand for PC and your notebook and some of the display is unexpectedly high. And then the second thing is the 5G penetration. So 5G phones actually consume a lot more capacity than your 4G phones because of the content increase in semiconductor. And the last point is the HPC and your hyperscalers and AI trends that also consume a lot of capacity. Okay, so we've seen an uptick in demand due to COVID um, and that will likely persist due to pent up demand as well as various tech infrastructure project pipelines. What about on the supply side? So on the supply side, um, I think overall the industry haven't really quite prepared for the demand increase on the supply side. And then we also see some supply chain disruption over the past two years due to COVID and also due to some of the natural disasters such as the snowstorm in Texas that have impacted the semiconductor production. Right, so there's been multiple events that have impacted the global supply chain and that's what's caused that prolonged shortage until now. How are we seeing this affect Asian companies in particular? This was one of the strongest upcycle that we've seen in the past two decades. Um, so certainly we saw a lot of price hike across the supply chain from the raw wafer to foundry and then to IC design companies. So Asian companies are really benefiting from that price hike um, over the past year. And also companies that have been able to get access to capacity will manage to gain market share in this process. So how are these Asian companies positioned now in the global context? Sure, so um, as you know, there's a pretty big foundry presence in Asia. And then we see companies being very aggressive to expand the capacity to meet the structural demand that we mentioned just now. Well, they've certainly been operating at capacity this year. So I imagine with additional capex as well as investments, we can expect them to see continued positive upside um, going forward. I want to turn now to look at some of the subsectors. Memory in particular has been one of the first that we've seen enter the down cycle. What are your views on how that cycle played out so far? For memory, um, we're not too worried about the down cycle at the moment because I think over the years, um, first there's a consolidation in the industry where we now see less players compared to 10 years ago. And second thing is I think the buyers and the sellers in the market are getting smarter now um, and controlling the inventory and for the producers at the, at the capacity. Um, so I think overall the cycle will get shorter and be less volatile going forward. And are there structural changes we're seeing as well that are supporting the industry? So underlying, we definitely see a structural demand uh, for memory. We see bit growth uh, growing every year. Um, so that's driven by um, the increasing data that we have and that we need to consume and store. Trends like your metaverse, um, autonomous vehicle, and also just increasing resolution across the different um, entertainment games and videos that, that we watch. They're all contributing to that trend. Okay, so what's your overall view on the semi-cycle? Um, so I think overall the semi-cycle will remain quite tight uh, going into next year, um, especially for mature node, um, because it's a lot harder to increase capacity in those areas. But the swing factor will still be in demand. And lastly, just to touch on some of the policy shifts that we've seen this year, many governments have indicated that semiconductors are foundational to their technological developments. What have we seen governments do to try and shore up capacity this year? So I think Throughout COVID and this shortage, government and company have realized that the supply chain security is actually very important. And so governments around the world um, have started incentive schemes such as tax break and subsidies um, to attract semiconductor companies to come over and set up uh, domestic capacity. Uh, so I think overall that's very positive for the sector as the company needs to build up capacity and with the additional um, policy benefit. Um, that's great for all the companies in the sector. So sounds like lots has certainly happened in the industry this year, but overall we're still very positive for the outlook. Well, thank you very much for your time, Edward. It was great to chat with you today. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to sharing more of our insights with you soon. Thank you.